Hey, welcome back. In this third part of this series, we are going to discover a set of Barba.js features. All we've done so far is to include Barba.js to our HTML files and then we assigned our wrapper and a container to each page. So with that done, the browser started caching the pages, leading to the minimization of the amount of HTTP requests made to the server. In addition to that, we eliminated the delay between the pages. Now, to make things more interesting, we can add a configuration object to the barba init function. One of the most essential properties of this object is transitions. Furthermore, a transition represents the action that happens before, during, and after the change of a container's content. So that said, the transitions property takes an array of objects as a value, and each one of these objects represents a transition. We can set a name for each of these transitions. It can be useful to distinguish what every transition does or when it needs to take place, especially when we have a significant number of transitions to work with. Hooks are methods. They basically hold the code that we want it to run at a certain point in time. As you can see, this diagram shows when exactly a hook gets called regarding the life cycle of page A, which represents the current page, and page B, which is the page that we are landing on after the end of the transition. So let's try to use a few of them. Before if you take a look back at the diagram, you'll see that this hook gets triggered before any other one. Now, let's see if it works. It doesn't. Let's try after, which is the exact opposite of before, meaning that this hook gets called after everything else. This one too doesn't work. Well, that's because these methods don't work unless we use them along with the leave or enter hooks. So let's add one of them. And there we go. The same thing goes for before enter, after enter, before leave and after leave. They all won't work unless we call leave or enter or both of them. In this case, you may think that after leave won't work because we don't have the leave hook. Actually, it will, because as I said, as long as we use leave or enter, which we have here, any other hook will be triggered. So, up until now, the hooks get called in a chronological order, even if they seem to be running at the same time. However, we can make the leave and enter methods run at the same time using the sync property. Keep in mind that the order gets changed as enter and leave will be running at the same time and so will their before and after. There are also the before once, once and after once which work the same way as the previous hooks except that they get triggered only once.
before once and after once also won't work unless we use the once method. All of these hooks can take a parameter which is an object composed of five properties. The first property is trigger which returns the element that triggered the transition. The second property is current. This one is an object that represents the current page. It holds in its term five properties, which are the container, The namespace The namespace is a custom name that you can give to a container. We can use it by adding the data namespace attribute. URL. This one is also an object that contains all of the information related to the URL of the page. HTML which is a string representation of the HTML code of the page. Route This object is made to be used by a plugin called Barba Router. The third property of the data object is next. This one is basically the same as current, except that it holds the data of the next page. Generally speaking, if you are using next, you should do it within the enter method instead of leave. Actually, to better understand why, let's call the leave method. This time nothing is showing up on the console, so let's try to display the entire next object instead of the namespace. As you can see, every property of this object is empty. This is actually the current state of next. However, if we try to look at the details, you'll see that the object contains data. These information in fact represent the previous state of next. If we take a look at the diagram, we are in this part of the life cycle of the two pages. In this lapse of time, both pages are still available on the DOM, which justifies why we could see the data when I clicked on the drop down in the console. Then, after a few milliseconds, the previous page was no longer in the DOM, therefore its data object was no longer there, and that's why every one of its properties was null, because it doesn't exist anymore. There are a variety of ways to call hooks. The first one is using the async await syntax.
We can also use arrow functions. Since we are using ES6 and later versions of the ECMAScript specification, we can use the destructing feature to get only the needed properties from the data object. Another way of calling hooks is through this async style. The transition function here takes two parameters. The first one is the namespace, and the second one is an object that contains a callback function. Calling the dawn constant here gives the green light to the transition to take place. It's very useful when you try to create some sort of a delay before the transition. You can get rid of the whole function if you need to use only the down constant. I'll be using that in an example that I'm going to build in a future video. We can also use classic promises. Same as before, ns here represents the namespace and the object represents the callback function. How do you think we can make a change on a DOM element that belongs to the container of the page that comes after the transition? 
The answer is through the next object. We can change the background color of the entire container using the style property on the next container object. Now, every time we go from one page to another, the color of the next page's container changes to blue, but since it's the same color, we can see the change occurring. Now, to change a child node of the container, which is the actual answer to the question, we can use the child nodes function to get the list of the elements that belong to the container. Let's say we want to change the size of the image, all we need to do is to take its index on the node list, then do the regular style thing. This should be enough for this part of the series, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.